This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So let's begin by looking at the formulation of our financial strategy by kicking things off with chapter one. Uh, and chapter one develops our financial and non-financial objectives. So what we need to be able to do to be able to determine whether or not we're looking at financial objectives or non-financial objectives and what they may be, we need to go through there and make sure that we understand the entity that we are looking to set those objectives for. So when we go through here and look at our introduction to the chapter, uh, we first of all go through there and introduce or, or recap from, from earlier studies that you've seen, maybe not in the financial pillar, uh, but maybe going through there and looking at your enterprise pillar by, by looking there essentially at who has an interest within the business. Because when you're setting these financial or non-financial objectives, we can't just go through there and set them based upon what the shareholders want. Yeah, the shareholders, they are the, the primary main stakeholder within the business. And don't forget, all your shareholder wants is capital growth. It wants a return on the investment that they have made. And as well as capital growth, it might want some form of dividend, mightn't it? So when you're starting to look at your financial objectives, you might want to go through there and begin to look at dividend growth, uh, dividend cover, or maybe go through and they're starting to look at target price earnings ratios to ensure that we've gone through there and looked at a sufficient level of capital growth that's happened within the business. However, when you're looking at an entity overall, we can't just focus on the financial factors. There might be non-financial factors to go through and consider as well. And that's why we need to think about other stakeholders other than just the shareholders. And we've gone through and listed them out there okay and as well as knowing who the stakeholders are we also need to have an awareness of what those stakeholders are interested in what do they want to see happening within the business and what do they want as not necessarily a return but but as an outcome that the business is producing okay so what you've got there is that the community at large okay uh, it mentions in brackets the environmental considerations uh, so when you're looking at the local community uh, we're thinking there about local shops, local businesses, I suppose. Uh, they will have an interest in how your local entity operates because they will be reliant on your business to, to fund their business. You know, if you have simple things such as uh, sandwich shops or, or places where you can get lunch, you know, you have your entity next to that sandwich shop. And I thought that a lot of your employees will go to that sandwich shop to get the lunch. OK, if you decide to close down your operation, then all of a sudden that impacts the sandwich shopper but that's a very basic example but think about it as well uh, with regards to your local community and regards to say a, a car manufacturer okay if you think about a car manufacturer that's got a huge manufacturing plant uh, and therefore uh, them that there's lots of local industries that depend upon that manufacturing plant okay uh, and when we're thinking about the environmental considerations as well you know think about Heathrow Airport there's talk about expanding Heathrow Airport isn't there you know, the shareholders, the owners of Heathrow Airport will be fantastic, really happy in terms of the expansion because they're going to go through and maximise their wealth, increase their returns because there will be more planes landing. Those passengers will then contribute more revenues to Heathrow and therefore there'll be more dividends and maybe capital growth in that share. But if you think about the local community uh, as the airport expands, it will take over land that was previously occupied by local residents. And then from an environmental perspective, if there's more planes, there's more pollution, isn't there? OK, I know planes are becoming more technologically advanced so that there's less pollution. But, you know, there's still pollution, whether that's coming from the engines in terms of uh, carbon dioxide or, or, or just noise. OK, so that's something that you would need to give consideration to. And a lot of businesses are giving more focus now to environmental considerations than what they've previously done. And that's whereby in Chapter three, we start to go through there and begin to look at the global reporting initiative and integrated reporting. So I'll save a little bit of that for future chapters. Uh, other stakeholders you've got are obviously your employees. Employees are obviously concerned as well, aren't they? That they have job security, uh, that they are set challenges by the business to help them improve and to help them learn and to help them grow. Uh, and if we don't go through there and help the employees out, if we don't set them ambitious targets, then, then they'll go elsewhere, okay? Now, it's vitally important that you maintain, isn't it, or retain, I should say, your key employees, okay? 
the managers, the directors of the company, are pretty much the same as the employees. Obviously, the managers and the directors have more of a say in how the business is run. Uh, so therefore, they want to be incentivized, don't they, in terms of performance related bonuses. Uh, so that's something that we consider in terms of financial and non-financial factors later on. Uh, customers, uh, obviously, your customers want technical innovation, don't they? OK, if you're an Apple customer, which I'm sure many of you are, OK, you, you don't buy your Apple phone. Uh, your your iPad or your whatever else that Apple have got these days are watches and it was the, the latest invention. You know, you invest in Apple or, or buy Apple products because you want them to, to invent newer products. Okay, I think there's some new earphones is the last thing I just recently read about. Okay, uh, so you want there to be innovation because that innovation draws you to buying that product. Okay, uh, we need to think about your suppliers. Suppliers want to be paid on time. Again, there's issues there with regard to supermarkets. Supermarkets tend not to pay their small suppliers on time, but that's a story for a later day. Uh, finance providers, similar to your suppliers, again, they want the money back that, that you have been lent uh, by that bank or financial institution. Then the government, you know, the, the government have a vested interest in how your business performs because they want to see that you're paying the correct level of taxes. Uh, they want to ensure there that you're creating jobs. They want to go through there and ensure that, that you are growing, because if you're growing, that will then give more taxes. And they want to ensure as well that when you are growing, you're, you're growing responsibly. OK, if you're not growing responsibly, then you could be called before Parliament in the UK to go through there and answer questions. And that's happened in recent history. OK, so, so when you're going through and thinking about your financial and your non-financial objectives, it's key there that you identify who your stakeholders are and what those stakeholders require okay uh, so in order to get yourselves thinking early on okay i'm not going to sit here for however long it takes me uh, i want to try and get you engaged and involved so what we're going to go through and do is just going to go and do a little exercise okay and this exercise quite simply okay uh, will get you to to look at some stakeholders and look at the needs that they have within your business